is that some of my fine like it. Um, he said start walking and I'm pretty well trained, so uh, I do what I'm told. Uh, does anyone a little bit drink? A few drinks? A little bit drunk? Yeah. Brilliant. Fuck for that. Um, so my name's Carl Harris, I'm from, from Norwich. Norwich. Anyone know Norwich? Oh, oh. Yeah, a few of you have been, you can tell the women's faces. So it's a quiet place. Moved here last oh, about three years ago now. Um, I grew up with my mum. Uh, Sally, anyone know? Uh, and Tracy. It's basically like a, a version of me, long hair and tits, less stubble. Uh, um, but my nan was the head of our family. We grew up with two women. And my aunties, we've got four aunties as well, with a big family. Um, and they were the, the heads of their kind of households. Their, their men were kind of cowering figures in the background. So uh, I, I'm thus being very well trained to be told what to do. Um, so I, I don't leave the toilet seat up, I don't piss on the floor, uh, you'd be surprised how many men that does apply to. Um, and I also pick up wet towels, if you bring me into a living room I will leave it cleaner than when I, I entered. Um, it also makes me a little bit camp. Um, the, the, the shirt choice was, uh, was, you know, was inspired. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of let you decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Because I go out with a girlfriend, shopping. And uh, she tries on something. And normally, you've got the uh, plugs have set answers. So, do I look fat in this? No, you look amazing. <laughs> and it, it's not because I'm like, oh, shit. It's because you want to get out on the shit. Um, but I don't. Because I don't mind shopping. <laughs> so, if you ask me if you look fat in it, and you look fat in it, I'm going to tell you you look fucking fat in it. Um, which. It doesn't go too well. Uh, I haven't had that many successful relationships. Um, although, it, to be fair, that's not all my fault. Uh, they were mental. Uh, now, now, most blokes, to be fair, are not going to tell you that their ex girlfriends were amazing. They're not going to say, I'll see your ex girlfriend, but she's a bitch. They're not going to say, she, oh, No, she's amazing. She's light of my life. They're going to say, She's fucking mental. Mine were. My first girlfriend, we're around the, uh, the in-laws, sitting down, planning what to do on a Friday night. She's looking through the yellow pages, it was a while ago. I'm on the mobile phone, we want to go bowling. So she's sitting down there, I'm on the chair, flipping away. She thinks it's a good idea to smack me in the face with the yellow fucking pages. Split eye. Yeah, not funny, don't laugh, alright? <laughs> a few years later, another girlfriend, we're having a bit of a tiff. And when I say a bit of a tiff, you know I'm well trained, I mean a bit of a tiff. It wasn't a, an out and out row. You weren't really going for it. I hadn't shagged the sister or anything like that. Um, it was just, I'd, I'd maybe not forgotten to get something away from my work. And uh, she gets a little bit on her eye rate, and I think we need to space. So I, I got to say, all right, calm down. Right, I'm going to go in the bedroom. Right, just give me some space. Don't want to get here. So I shut the door, and uh, she starts trying to keep the fucking door in. <laughs> She's not thinking, I'll give him five. Uh, he's obviously not happy. We need some space. She's thinking, oh, he's getting that fucking bedroom. <laughs> so, she goes, oh, here we're going downstairs. We live in a, a posh flat. Uh, two floors, kitchen, bathroom, bottom. Bedroom, living room, top floor. You know? um, she pops downstairs, gets a 12-inch fucking carving knife and tries to come in the door by force. So, I'm crying on the other side, <laughs> trying to fit, put my phone from under the bed to call the police. They turn up, anyway, didn't end well. I thought, uh, two years later, I'll, I'll give this one up. Um, <laughs> but to be honest, I don't hate her. I only hate one of my ex-girlfriends. Um, and that's the girlfriend who cheated on me. And not, the uh, first girlfriend cheated as well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like insincerity. I'm, you know, I'm in touch with my feminist, so I can tell. Or his intuition. Um, but it's the one that cheated on me and couldn't tell me the truth. She, she'd go on holiday with a mutual friend, and she came back and she was off. And I knew something's wrong. And uh, I said, what's wrong? She said, nothing. I said, you're lying, I can tell. <laughs> don't like me, it's like mine. <laughs> she said, no, I wasn't saying. I said, I'll kiss another man. I said, oh my God. And I, I, I have trust issues. So I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to break that. But I knew something more had happened. You can tell. You just know that there's something they ain't telling you. So I said, just tell me, I've broken up. You dropped me down. You've done something else, haven't you? And she said, no, no, just kiss 
I don't know. I believe you. They said, we'll just be friends, we'll stay in touch. I said, okay, cool. Awesome. It's a nice breakup. <laughs> a couple of months later, I meet the neutral friend she went on holiday with. she had been fucking a bouncer that whole week. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you're ever going to plan to go to Norwich, but if you do, and uh, for the purposes of the story, uh, I will say her name was Chantal Gray, because it was fucking Chantal Gray, right? <laughs> Tell her, I said, Oh! You fucking whore! Um, now, I saw her several years later, after finding this out, and uh, she was walking down the main clubbing street, um, and she sees me, and I see her, and she goes, The arms went out automatically because she just didn't know which one to fucking smack her with. <laughs> um, anyway, you've been lovely. Um, I've met a lovely lady now. Um, final point: if, uh, if you search for enough stones, you will find a diamond. She's at the back there. Um, not all wounds are healed by time, and uh, Chantel is a whore. Thank you very much. <laughs>